trying to get pregnant if you are over age 35. So what to know if you are advanced maternal age or the worst word, geriatric pregnancy. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. So I help you understand your body, your health, your hormones, and your fertility. And today I'm talking about something that is very near and dear to me, and that is trying to conceive if you are 35 and older. What changes do you need to make? What should you expect? And what can you do? This video is gonna help you just learn more about your body. So please subscribe, share, ask a comment, like it. That means so much to me so we can spread this message to more people that you deserve to understand your body the best and be your own health advocate. Also, before we just jump in, huge thanks for all your support on The Fertility Formula, which is my debut book. It is not out yet, but you can buy it for pre-sale if you go to nataliecrawfordmd.com book. And if you buy it now in the pre-order time period, you go to the website, you can put in your order number and you can get our pre-order bonuses, which include the seven day hormone reset, my lifestyle backed guide that's very accessible explaining why you need to make certain changes. And you're gonna get access to the IVF guide, which hopefully you don't need right now, but if you need to do IVF, it's going to be a great resource for you along the way. Well, if you are over age 35 and you wanna get pregnant, you've probably heard about your biological clock or you've heard the words geriatric pregnancy or advanced maternal age. And what does this really mean? I'm gonna break down exactly what to expect and how to optimize your fertility no matter the age. The reason why 35 is considered advanced maternal age is because this is the age when you suddenly have a higher risk of a chromosome abnormality than in the past. It's about 50-50, meaning at age 35, about half of your eggs are going to be genetically normal and half your eggs are going to be genetically abnormal. It's not that your fertility suddenly stops and it's not that you can't get pregnant once you turn 35. It also doesn't mean that you're much more likely to have pregnancy complications. In fact, the only thing that's really changing is the increased need to screen you for chromosome abnormalities inside the pregnancy. Egg quality does start to decrease around age 35, but it is more profound after age 37. And many women still get pregnant in this 35 to 37 age. Women can still get pregnant after this too. We just do start to see significant decreases in the odds of getting pregnant. So what really changes? Well, number one, I will see so many people who come to me and they think that their egg quantity is what really changes the most. Meaning I'm gonna be out of eggs because I'm 35. The amount of times I've had somebody schedule a visit for that reason alone just tells me how prevalent this thinking is. Remember that you are born with all the eggs you're ever going to have. I like to think about them as in a vault inside your ovary. And throughout your life, eggs are going to come out of this vault. And when the vault is empty, that's when you're in menopause. Well, menopause is going to happen around age 51 to 52 for the majority of people. Your fertility significantly declines about 10 years before that. So we'll say in your early 40s. You, but you're still not out of eggs, the vast majority of people. Now remember, you do have less eggs to work with, and this does become an important component of what is happening. And we call how many eggs you have remaining your ovarian reserve. If we think about the eggs in your vault, each month a group of eggs is sent out of the vault. And from these eggs, one is chosen to ovulate and the rest of them die. And then next month you have another group. Well, the number of eggs sent out of the vault, how many you have, actually corresponds to how many are remaining in the vault. So when you have more eggs inside, more come out, and when you have fewer eggs inside, fewer come out. So what you see outside the vault is a correlation and helps us understand what to expect. This is called testing your ovarian reserve. And one of the most common ways we do this is with a blood test called AMH or anti-mullerian hormone. AMH is made from the cells that surround all of the eggs outside the vault. So more inside, more eggs come out, higher AMH. The opposite is true. Although we do statistically see a decline at 35 from previously, it is not to the point where it is going to prevent you from getting pregnant. At very low egg count, we do start to see changes in your ovulatory pattern, and in everybody, we'll get to some place where our ovaries will no longer respond. But for most people, that's not 35. Now, egg quality is what really starts to kind of come into play here. Egg quality, often we'll say that's the genetic normalcy of the eggs, but I really like to think about egg quality twofold. It is both the genetic normalcy and the metabolic competency. So we need both of these for these eggs to work the best. What does that mean? 
you have to be genetically normal. That's the backbone of a normal baby. But you also have to have the metabolic capacity as an egg to be able to allow fertilization to happen and for early embryo growth. In fact, the first three days of embryo development are completely dependent on that maternal egg source for the whole metabolism and for cell division. So let's think about egg quality as both genetics and metabolic factors. And what this means for us is that both of these are impacted by age. So your genetics are going to change the longer the eggs are inside your body. I use the analogy of imagining the chromosomes inside your eggs like kindergartners in a line. The longer they've been asked to stand in line, the more out of line they are going to get. That's what happens over time. Our eggs are held in a stage of cell division. This changes over time. But the metabolic factors have a lot to do with inflammation, the world around us, our environment. And this is where we control more of how our egg quality is, whereas we can't really control that genetic normalcy. We do start to see an increase in abnormal ovulation as well as you are over age 35. So we'll see what actually changes is egg quantity, egg quality, and we'll say ovulation pattern. A lot of this is due to becoming into lower egg count. Maybe it's due to the increased rate of autoimmune disease or inflammatory burden as we get older, but we do start to see some ovulation shifts as women age. And then we see time to pregnancy increases. It often takes you longer to get pregnant because less of your eggs are genetically normal or metabolically competent. And this also increases the miscarriage risk. So you cannot change your age, but you can understand it. You can understand what this means and you can absolutely optimize your environment and set yourself up for success. So what can you do to improve your chances? Number one, know your numbers. If you're over age 35, understand is your cycle regular and accurate? When are you ovulating? What is your ovarian reserve? And if in doubt, talk to a fertility doctor so we can do this early testing for you. The best way to track your ovulation is gonna be the way that you are going to feel most familiar and most competent with. I find that it's really easy to use cervical mucus monitoring or basal body temperature. I know you can. there's many apps that have wearables. I use natural cycles with my Aura Ring, but there's many different options that you can use in order to track accurately. And then there's also ovulation predictor kits. There's many different systems to use an OPK, but that's detecting the LH surge. So we want to know your numbers. We want to know how many eggs you have left. We want to know how long your cycle is and if you are ovulating so that you can time intercourse appropriately. And we want to support your egg health and control all those metabolic factors. This is going to be with an anti-inflammatory diet, lots of fruits and vegetables, increase in fiber, increase in sleep, y'all get more sleep, exercise to move your body and to build muscle, building muscle, skeletal muscle fights insulin resistance the most. And there was just a study released showing that insulin resistance decreased success with IVF or caused infertility, even in patients who don't have PCOS. So we know that this inflammatory burden is contributing. So we want you to manage your stress, prioritize sleep, eat healthy, definitely control the factors that you can, but do not hesitate. And probably most importantly, to see a doctor. You definitely want to see a fertility doctor if you're over age 35, if you've been trying for six months or more, but you can also see a doctor before this at any time, if you just want to get tested or if you have any concerns. Concerns can include irregular cycles, pain with intercourse, extremely painful periods, difficulty tracking those cycles, or if you're considering egg freezing or IVF, this is the age range where I often see couples come in who maybe want more than one child and are just starting on their journey, and it might be smart to look at IVF to save embryos for the future so that you can still have that big family you wanted even if you got started a little bit later. The reality is if we compare to age 30, having about a 20% chance of pregnancy per month, if you're just starting to have a family at age 35, your odds per month are going to be closer to about 12%. If you're 38, they're closer to 5%. And if you're 40, closer to 3%. None of those numbers are zero, but being proactive is a great way to be informed and to stay on top of this if having a child is a goal for you. And then just a few myths that I want you to ignore, that you've waited too long and it's your fault. That is not true. Your fertility is much more than luck. Understanding your body, advocating for yourself, knowing your numbers, and controlling what you can is ideal. Number two, IVF is the only option after age 35. Not true. Many people get pregnant naturally or with minimal intervention, but IVF can help and is an amazing tool, and I want to see us villainize it less. And then number three is it's too late to get pregnant at 40. Now, many people get pregnant at this age, both in my office and outside. 
But understanding what you're dealing with is very important because time is your most valuable commodity. And if there is something standing in your way or preventing you from conceiving, we don't want to find out about it when it is too late. So you deserve honest information. Trying to get pregnant when you're over age 35 might look a little bit different than it did when you were younger, but it is not impossible and you are not alone. So if you liked this video, please subscribe and follow along for fertility education and facts about your body. You can check out the fertility formula anywhere books are sold or nataliecrawfordmd.com slash book so that you can learn more. And as always, you can get more information on Instagram at nataliecrawfordmd or on the As a Woman podcast. Thank you, friends. <laughs>